Can you please introduce yourself? Hi. Hi, I'm Marilyn Joan Roberts. Use the mic. Use the mic. There's a mic here. Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Marilyn. Yes. Yes. Mary Claire Sharp. Jacqueline Colton. some stories from you about the truth and working with Tom O'Horgan. Okay, I'll start. Um, I've, I was the first to work with Tom. Um, I met him uh, actually through Ellen Stewart. Uh, I had just come back uh, from spending, uh, spending a year in Paris and Denmark with Jacqueline. The two of us had gone off to Europe to uh, take a cafe theater abroad, uh, just as an experiment off the top of our heads. And uh, we, uh, we spent a year there and came back. And that summer, uh, Ellen came, called me one day and said, oh, there's a director I would like you to work with. And I thought, all right. So uh, I was doing other things. but uh, So she came up to my apartment and took me over to the Judson Church, the Judson Theater. And uh, I saw this play. It was like a wackadoodle play. It was Tom doing one of his op pop operas. And I, had, I was 21, so I didn't know, I wasn't that familiar with the whole happening movement and all of the, the, that was going on at the Justin at the time. Uh, but this play, it was an opera, but I mean, everyone was running around, like half naked, with uh, all kinds of crazy costumes, the ones that had them on, and uh, musical instruments. But the most interesting thing was that at, at one point in the play, every, the whole cast leaves the theater, and it goes out into the street, and up onto, onto Third Street. And so the whole play then went out like into the street, and we all followed. So after that, uh, to, Ellen introduced me to Tom, and she said, I'd like you to do a play with him. And so El Tom said, he suggested us doing uh, Genet's The Maze. So she said, fine. So I started rehearsing with Tom that summer uh, in his lot, the one that... Um, uh, the, the Paul mentioned the, the black loft above the uh, fire uh, house, uh, and we started uh, rehearsing uh, the maids to be done at La Mama, and that was the, Tom's first play at La Mama. Uh, and during that period, uh, to, Ellen brought him some other plays, so we started doing another play called uh, and, uh, and Now the Weather. And in that play, uh, I was cast as the wife. It was a wife, a husband, and two children. So I was the wife, Victor LaParry, and um, um, Marlene Fisher were the children, although we were all the same age. Uh, and then we needed a husband, uh, but Tom couldn't find any actors, so it, we only had like five days to put this play together. So he said, I have a friend, that, I have a friend that uh, will, will do this for us. He's not an actor, but he works downtown on Wall Street, and he's an accountant or something. So uh, I go, go to the theater, and who is it? It is Harvey Milk. So, uh, so I was Harvey Milk's wife in this play. But the most interesting thing is the oh, so and you have to realize at that time, no one thought this was ever going to be anything. I mean, there was just no way that this theater or this movement or these ideas were ever going to amount to anything. So there was such incredible freedom and craziness. So at uh, opening night, uh, I have a monologue that I say to to Harvey. And he comes in uh, from work in the, in the play, and he has a briefcase. And I open the briefcase to give my monologue, and there are all these magazines with naked men in them. <laughs> <laughs> so these were the kind of tricks that were going on, <laughs> and pranks that were going on. So no one really took this whole movement too seriously. But anyhow, it moved on. We did the play. Uh, Ellen got more bookings for uh, Europe, for the places that Jackie and I had just previously performed in Europe and Denmark and Paris. We went back, I was, I was sent with Tom, uh, Jackie was sent with another director, um, Ross Alexander. Uh, we did the plays in Denmark, they became very successful. Um, and Jackie then came a part of us, and there, was, there were five of us, we were in a schoolhouse in Denmark, in the boondocks <coughs> of Denmark. Uh, and. Um, Victor LaParry and I went to Tom one day and said, Tom, I think these plays are really terrific. We shouldn't go back to New York. We should stay here and work on your concepts and your ideas. We remained, there were five of us, Jackie and myself, uh, Victor LaParry, Michael Warren Powell, and Kevin O'Connor. 
and we formed at that moment the first Lamama troop in Denmark, the five of us, uh, and then <laughs> came back and the rest is history. Oh. Yeah. When Mira Claire and I came back from Europe, I'm sitting there, we're talking to Ellen, and somebody calls up and says, um, our leading lady just had to go to Chicago. There's an illness in the family. And Ellen said, I will send Miss Jacqueline Colton over uh, in a taxi, and she can do it with a book. And I did. I, I went on and... Through that, I met Lamford Wilson, and did, this is the real speaking. So when Mary Claire and I were doing it in Europe, we had to go to a little fabric shop, and we bought gingham. So I looked like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And I went to the singer sewing machine. And, and we handmade these things with, with the sewing machine. Neither of us knew much about sewing. <laughs> but we had a great time, and we put on play after play after play, and... Uh, just had a great time. Hi, I'm Marilyn Roberts. Um, I um, I was um, a very serious um, actress, <laughs> <laughs> studying with Lee Strasberg, and there was a, a brilliant young playwright and actor in the class. Gregory was on this. Oh, yes, he yes. is. Uh, who brought me uh, downtown, and um, we, I did a play with, directed by Ron Lynx, written by Gregory, and then another play by um, Ted Harris, directed by Ron Lynx. And then I was in Mr. Robert Heide's, who's joined us right here. I met Robert Heide through Ron Lynx and through Gregory. And we did Bob's play, Why Tuesday Never Has a Blue Monday. And um, one night, this was at the Mama uh, Blue Monday. And, uh, <laughs> and Tom came backstage one night and said, you want to go to Europe? <laughs> and so then I signed up. And then uh, we started, one, one of the plays that we were rehearsing was, we started to rehearse Buds. And uh, Tom said, uh, I, I think Ellen will make, is going to make you a dress with the zipper in the front. And then when, when the great actor, Seth Allen, played the lead. Uh -huh. And then so when it was, uh, we had our big scene, Rochelle Owens play Buds. And there was a, a scene where he wanted me to have a, a, this dress with the zipper in it. So Ellen made the dress with the zipper that went from here to here. Then I pulled that down and let the uh, boobs come out. <laughs> and I, I leaned into uh, uh, okay. Seth. Um, uh, <laughs> I was blocked from Facebook because of this picture. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then to fall into, ask me to do this, and to fall into the position of the Michelangelo's um, theater with um, uh, me like this and with Seth uh, dead and Christ figure. And all this, uh, his imagination. So, I mean, oh, and, and then, of course, Mr. Al Albert Poland's right here produced yeah, but it. We're going to speak about facts later. So, so we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Okay, anyway, it was just a lot of surprises and a lot of fun. And uh, Kevin O'Connor was a, a wonderful help to me. And I, uh, he coached me along. I said, I don't have enough time. He said, you got plenty of time. I've got all this on your knees. And, it was it was a wonderful experience. So we're gonna to go to the clip. We're actually gonna go back to the Denmark days, to the first tour.
Katina Robert huh. Marilyn Victor Jackie Tom <laughs> Boxiganga, funny word, Boxiganga, was a group of sterling actors in the late Renaissance. A book from 1603 says this kind of Boxiganga is dangerous, being more changeable than the moon and more unsafe than the borderland unless it has a good head to rule it. Between your fingers. Oh. 